In this online lecture, we're going to talk about how to name alcohols. And first, make sure you know how to identify an alcohol. It's basically some alkane molecule with an OH attached to it, like this. We're going to see that OH groups have very high priority, so that defines this molecule as an alcohol, which means we need to name it as an alcohol. So let me show you how to do that. Step one, first find the longest chain of carbons, but that chain of carbons has to have the carbon that bears the OH. And of course, for this case, that would be this chain right here. Now notice we have four carbons in the box. So four carbons, remember, means but. So, so far we have but 10, but because this is an alcohol, we change the ending to ol for alcohol. So the parent name of this molecule is butenol. Notice that's how important alcohols are. They actually go into the parent name. They're not merely just substituents. Now let's go to step two here. To determine the correct numbering here, now you kind of treat the OH as a substituent, which means since we want low substituent numbers, we should number from left to right in this case. Which brings us now to step three. Technically now we're treating him as a substituent here, but what we're gonna do is not label him in the name. What this becomes here, step four, now we're ready, we're just gonna call this 2-butanol. So here's how we interpret that name. Buta means four carbons, OL means it's an alcohol, and two is telling us which carbon the OH is on within the chain. So that's how the nomenclature works here with alcohols. Some textbooks and some professors might use an alternative way of naming. For instance, you could also call this buten to all. Think about it, that means the same thing. Buten means four carbons, and 2 all is telling us we have an OH on carbon 2. Now that we got this, let's look at some sample problems here. What's the name of this molecule? Now watch what happens here. In step one, technically the longest chain in this molecule is this right here. If you count, you'll see that you have six carbons in this box. But notice this chain doesn't include this carbon right here that is bearing the OH alcohol. So even though in the box that is the longest chain, we're not gonna call that our longest chain. Remember, alcohols have high priority. So instead, this becomes our longest chain, which contains the carbon that bears the alcohol. So the parent name of this molecule is gonna be pentenol. That brings us to step two here. In this case, we'd want a number from right to left to get our low substituent numbers. That's putting the OH on carbon one and that ethyl there on carbon two. Which now brings us to step three. Let's circle and label now. This would be the OH, this would be the ethyl, which prepares us now for step four. Let's put this all together. We would say two ethyl one pentanol. Again, that's telling us we have a pent five carbon chain, it's an alcohol, and the alcohol is on carbon one. And also on carbon two, we happen to have an ethyl. So let's look at another example here. What would you do in this case? Let's look at step one. Of course, the longest chain here that has the OH in it would be this one. We have three carbons in the box, so the parent name here is propenol. Now let's look at step two here. What's the correct way to number this? Technically, if you number from left to right, you have a substituent on carbon one, the BR, and a substituent on carbon three, the OH. But if you number it from right to left, then you also have a substituent technically on carbon one and a substituent on carbon three. So the question here is, which is it? Or does it even matter? And the answer is, it does matter. Remember, alcohols actually go in the parent name of the molecule, so the alcohol has the priority here. That means we need to label this as our carbon one right here, which makes this carbon two and three. So that's how you would handle this situation. Now let's finish this off. Step three here, let's circle and label. We got this OH here, we got this BR here. That makes this a bromo right here which leads us to step four. Let's place this all together. 
we would have 3 bromo, 1 propanol. Now, let's look at another example here, and let's use a skeletal structure to do this. For step one, let's find our longest chain that has the alcohol carbon in it. Here it is. If you count, you'll see six. That makes the parent name hexanol. That brings us to now step two. In order to get our low substituent numbers, we would have to number from left to right in this case. This gives us a substituent on carbon two and four, whereas if we numbered from right to left, we would get a substituent on three and five. So we stick with this numbering right here and it brings us to step three. Let's circle and label. What we got here, of course, is a methyl and we got the OH over here. We're now ready for step four. Let's put this all together. We have two methyl for hexanol. So notice here in this example, even though the alcohol has the priority, we still numbered in step two from left to right because what technically has higher priority than the alcohol is the low substituent numbers in the name of the molecule. At this point, I'd like to point out here, notice nomenclature has a lot of its nuances here and that's what's so important for us to know and that's why I'm choosing these particular examples to look at. I'm trying to expose you to as many of the nuances of nomenclature as possible so that you can be well prepared for your next orgo test. However, keep in mind, you still need to practice this on your own. If you just watch all these online lectures of me naming all these molecules and you never practice one problem yourself, you're not going to be good at nomenclature and your orgo test is not going to go well. So please make sure you practice as many nomenclature problems as you can from your orgo textbook.